The Grand Army of the Republic was a fraternal organization composed of veterans of the Union Army, Union Navy, Marines and the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service who served in the American Civil War for the Northern Federal Forces. Founded in 1866 in Decatur, Illinois, and growing to include hundreds of posts across the nation, it was dissolved in 1956 when its last member, Albert Wilson of Duluth, Minnesota, died. Linking men through their experience of the war, the GAR, became among the first organized advocacy groups in American politics, supporting voting rights for black veterans, promoting patriotic education, helped to make Memorial Day a national holiday, lobbying the United States Congress to establish regular veterans' pensions, and supporting Republican political candidates. Its peak membership, a more than 490,000, was in 1890, a high point of various Civil War commemorative and monument dedication ceremonies. It was succeeded by the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, composed of male descendants of Union Army and Union Navy veterans. History after the end of American Civil War, various state and local organizations were formed for veterans to network and maintain connections with each other. Many of the veterans used their shared experiences as a basis for fellowship. Groups of men began joining together, first for camaraderie and later for political power, emerging as most influential among the various organizations during the first post-war years, was the Grand Army of the Republic founded on April 6, 1866, on the principles of fraternity, charity and loyalty, in Decatur, Illinois, by Dr. Benjamin F. Stevenson, the GAR, initially grew and prospered as a de facto political arm of the Republican Party during the heated political contests of the Reconstruction era. The commemoration of Union Army and Navy veterans, black and white, immediately became entwined with partisan politics. The GAR promoted voting rights for then called Negro, colored, black veterans, as many white veterans recognized their demonstrated patriotism and sacrifices, providing one of the first racially integrated social fraternal organizations in America. Black veterans, who enthusiastically embraced the message of equality, shunned black veterans organizations in preference for racially inclusive integrated groups. But when the Republican Party's commitment to reform in the South gradually decreased, the GAR's mission became ill-defined and the organization floundered. The GAR almost disappeared in the early 1870s, and many state-centered divisions, named departments, and local posts ceased to exist. In his General Order No. 11, dated May 5, 1868, first GAR, Commander-in-Chief, General John A. Logan declared May 30 to be Memorial Day, calling upon the GAR membership to make the May 30 observance an annual occurrence. Although not the first time war graves had been decorated, Logan's order effectively established Memorial Day as the day upon which Americans now pay tribute to all our nation's war casualties, missing in action, and deceased veterans. As decades passed, similarly inspired commemorations also spread across the South as Confederate Memorial Day or Confederate Decoration Day. Usually in April, led by organizations of Southern soldiers in the parallel United Confederate Veterans, in the 1880s, the Union Veterans Organization revived under new leadership that provided a platform for renewed growth. By advocating federal pensions for veterans, as the organization revived, black veterans joined in significant numbers and organized local posts. The national organization, however, failed to press the case for similar pensions for black soldiers. Most black troops never received any pension or remuneration for wounds incurred during their Civil War service. The GAR was organized in two departments at the state level and posts at the community level, and military-style uniforms were worn by its members. There were posts in every state in the U.S. and several posts overseas. 
The pattern of establishing departments and local posts was later used by other American military veterans organizations such as the Veterans of Foreign Wars and the later American Legion. The GAR's political power grew during the latter part of the 19th century, and it helped elect several United States presidents, beginning with the 18th, Ulysses S. Grant, and ending with the 25th, William McKinley. Five Civil War veterans and members were elected President of the United States. All were Republicans. For a time, candidates could not get Republican presidential or congressional nominations without the endorsement of the GAR, Veterans Voting Bloc, with membership strictly limited to veterans of the late unpleasantness. The GAR encouraged the formation of allied orders to aid them in various works. Numerous male organizations jousted for the backing of the GAR, and the political battles became quite severe until the GAR finally endorsed the Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War as its heir. Although a male organization, the GAR admitted its sole woman member in 1897. Sarah Emma Edmonds served in the 2nd Michigan Infantry as a disguised man named Franklin Thompson from May 1861 until April 1863. In 1882, she collected affidavits from former comrades in an effort to petition for a veteran's pension which she received in July 1884. Edmonds was only a member for a brief period as she died September 5th. 1898. However, she was given a funeral with military honors when she was reburied in Houston in 1901. The GAR reached its largest enrollment in 1890, with 490,000 members. It held an annual national encampment every year from 1866 to 1949. At that final encampment in Indianapolis, Indiana, the few surviving members voted to retain the existing offices in place until the organization's dissolution. Theodore Penland of Oregon, the GAR's commander at the time, was therefore its last. In 1956, after the death of the last member, Albert Wilson, the GAR was formally dissolved.